resides a power. This power is known as a female or motherly primordial power. And since ancient times, it is known as Kundalini. The limbic area on top of the head integrates all the systems in the body and is therefore the principal control center for the body. Your experiment with truth starts when your kundalini rises up through the spinal column to enlighten this limbic area. When this happens, a new dimension of perception is achieved through which you learn to understand the energy flow from your body to your hands. All the nerve centers and consequently all the organs reflect their condition in the hands and on each fingertip. I bow to all the seekers of truth. <coughs> At the very outset, we have to know that truth is what it is. We cannot change it, we cannot transform it. Also, we cannot know it at human awareness. We have to become a subtler being as Christ has said, you are got to be born again. <coughs> Something has to happen to us to know the truth. It's obvious that we do not know the Absolute Truth. If we had known the Absolute, there would have been no quarrels, no fighting, no problems. <coughs> but we don't know and that's why we have committed so many mistakes. When we look at the science, what we find, we have crossed over all the limits and have created horrible giants to kill us, like hydrogen bomb, oxygen bomb. Even when we look at religion then, what we find in the religion that whatever is preached, whatever is the framework, whatever is said, <clears throat> is excellent, is wonderful. The incarnations, the prophets are all right. But why, while following it, we fail? We cannot do it. What is the reason? We may belong to any religion, but we are capable of committing any sin. <clears throat> so what's wrong with it? Why it is that whatever we have been preached, whatever we have learned mentally doesn't work out. It's an obvious thing to know that we do not know the Absolute Truth and that that Truth, whatever it is, is not innate within us, is not within ourselves. It is from outside. And so whenever we try to do something, even when we try to be charitable, ego might crop in, one may try to make money, one may try to get to power. Whatever is the goodness within us, after some time, in many people it falters and it does something else which it should not have done. Also see the ecological problems and other problems we have now. Can you believe it that all these problems are because of human beings? They are not because of divine or divinity. <coughs> but the divinity is within you. It is within you. You have already seen this mechanism <coughs> and you have been explained about it. This mechanism does exist within us. Now whatever I am telling you, you need not take me blindfolded. Blind faith is not going to help you. But scientifically if you see, you should accept me as some sort of a hypothesis and if it is proved that as honest people you have to accept it because this is for your benevolence, is for your benevolence of your body, your mind, your life, your family, benevolence of the city, benevolence of Australia and benevolence of the whole world. So this is a new race of people who have to come up, who are expressing their divinity that is within them. 
It's all within you. Only thing you have to get connected with that all-pervading power of divine love of God. If you can get connected with that power, then your divinity will start expressing. For example, see now, these lamps, these lights are there. If they are not connected to the mains, they cannot show the light. This one, if it is not connected to the mains, has no meaning. <clears throat> In the same way, we have to be connected to that power, and that power exists. Whether it exists or not, it's better to find out. Instead of that, if you just say, some people do say, there is no God, it's absolutely unscientific. First find out if there is God or not, and then you can say yes or no. In the same way, if there is an all-pervading power, which is doing all this living work, we see beautiful flowers here, we take them for granted. We don't even think, how can this Mother Earth give this color, give this beautiful fragrance? how she creates, we just accept it. Look at our eyes, how beautifully they are made. We never even think how we have become from amoeba to this stage a human being. How it ever happened, who did all this, what was that power? And that power is this all-pervading power, which does all the living work, all the living work that pulsates in our heart, and that is the one we have to get connected to, and this is the reflection within us, is of the Holy Ghost, as we say in the Bible, is this, lying in the triangular bone is this power of Kundalini. <coughs> now, it is <coughs> this power which works out your Self-realization, in the sense it raises itself awakens, goes through six centers, pierces through the fontanel bone area, which is the actualization of baptism. It has to be an actualization. Somebody just put some water on your head, now you are baptized. You do not. What has happened? What is so special? Everybody is the same, whether they are Hindu, Christians, Muslims, no difference at all. So the difference between a person who is a Self-realized and who is not Self-realized is tremendous. Firstly, as they must have told you, that it cures you of incurable diseases. It does. We have three doctors in Delhi who have got their MD in Sahaja Yoga for curing incurable diseases. Mostly Sahaja Yogis never get any diseases. But if somebody has, also can be cured if the Kundalini could be awakened and if it can be connected to the means. Perhaps we are not at all aware as to how many powers we have. We are just only thinking we are human beings. No, we are superhuman beings and we can be very easily that. Today for the introduction, I don't want to say too many things, but tomorrow I'll be able to tell you precisely what is the nature of the Spirit and what <coughs> it does within us. It's very important to understand that if we are not this body, this mind, this ego, these conditionings, and if we are the pure Spirit, then what is the nature of the Spirit? What does it do? And then what becomes of us? He said in all the religious books, I am not telling you something new, only thing what we have to do now is to just awaken within you whatever is said in that, so it becomes part and parcel of your being. Now these people, you can imagine Australians singing Sanskrit song. I will tell you, English ruled us for three hundred years, they couldn't say, say one sentence of Hindi language, leave alone Sanskrit. We had to tell them, if they had to say that, open the door or say, close the door, we had to say some English sentence so that, uh, we used to say, there was a banker, means, if you say there was a banker, that means close the door. If you have to say, uh, open the door, then I said, there was a cold day. Otherwise, they didn't know how to pronounce even 
Sanskrit words. And look at them, how they have picked up such difficult songs in Sanskrit and all that. Not only in all languages and Indian sing English songs and all kinds of Spanish and French and everything, how they have picked up. It is because now they have felt their own powers of absorbing that is knowledge. Every religion, if you go through, is that they should, you must have knowledge. But knowledge doesn't mean bookish knowledge. This is the point they never understood, that we cannot do with the bookish knowledge. If bookish knowledge was everything, then most of them never went to university or in any college. Christ never went there, Muhammad Sahib never knew how to read and write. So many people, same with Buddha and same with Mahavira, most of these people never went to any university and learned nothing. So how is it by reading something you become that? Not by reading, but by something happening within you that you achieve that state. And that state is called as a spiritual state of Self-realization, where you know about yourself and you know about others. So your awareness, that is human awareness, becomes another greater awareness and new dimension of awareness coming, which we call as collective consciousness. We are not collectively conscious. We want to be collective, but we are not conscious. For example, we don't know what's wrong with us inside and what's wrong with others. After realization, you feel a cool or a warm breeze coming out of your head, hands, fingers, and also out of your fontanel bone. But then you have to just learn what do these things mean, the decoding of it. Even if you put ten people and cover their eyes and ask them, what's wrong with this person? They'll all show the same finger. And then you ask that person, is this wrong with you? He said, how do you know? Because you know your centers, which are the fundamental energy centers within us, and you can feel them on your fingertips. Of course, medically, you know that sympathetic nervous system is grown up to your fingertips, that's all. Being honest, doctors can't say much about it. But they do not know anything about the parasympathetic nervous system, which is beyond their control, and honestly they say that we don't understand parasympathetic. To know parasympathetic, you have to become a realized soul. When the Kundalini passes to the center, central line, then only the parasympathetic gets awakened and comes into our attention. You become quite capable of curing others, no problem. You become quite capable of curing yourself. But also you become quite capable of knowing others, understanding others, and you know absolute truth about everything. For example, somebody comes from India, just from jail, wears a orange dress, comes here. Everybody believes that person. Whether he's true or false, nobody wants to find out. How will you find out? The way he talks, the way he behaves, everybody will be impressed by that person, naturally. But how will you find out? Only after realization. You can feel it on your fingertips if this gentleman is false or real. There are many other things one should know also, that a person who asks money, is bothered about your purse, cannot be God's man, cannot be. Because God doesn't understand money. And you cannot purchase it, so invaluable. How much did we pay to Mother Earth for getting these flowers. She doesn't understand any banking, she doesn't understand any money. In the same way, it is something that is so innate, the living process for which you cannot pay, and you don't have to put in efforts. It is sahaja, means it's born with you, and effortlessly it works out. Only thing is that I have to request you before we <coughs> start our process of awakening, that 
there are three conditions we have to follow. <clears throat> One of them, the foremost, is this, that you should be confident that you are all capable of getting your Self-realization, all of you. After all, you are human beings, the epitome of evolution. All of you can get your Self-realization. Of course, if somebody is very arrogant and doesn't want to have his realization, I cannot force it, because I respect your freedom. If you don't want to have it, it cannot be done, it cannot be forced. The second condition, <coughs> that means in the first case, you have to be self-confident. The second condition is that you should not condemn yourself at all. You should not say that I'm guilty. You should not judge. After all, you are human beings. Only human beings can commit mistakes, you are not gods. So if you have committed mistakes, all right, it doesn't matter. At this present moment, you are not committing any mistakes and we are dealing with the present moment. So forget it, don't feel guilty. If you feel guilty, this center here on the left side catches very badly. As a result of that, you get what we call a disease called angina, mostly, otherwise you might get spondylitis, you might get also lethargic organs. So to feel guilty is something mental, artificial and just in the brain working out and torturing. There's no need to feel guilty at all. Now, the third one is even easier, <coughs> is to forgive everyone without thinking about them. Is it easy or not? Some people is very, very difficult, <laughs> but it's not. <coughs> it's the easiest thing. Now, logically, let us see. Whether you forgive or don't forgive, you don't do anything, what do you do? Think on nothing. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands, absolutely into wrong hands. But if you forgive <coughs> and forget, your torture is over. The people who have troubled you are enjoying nicely and you are torturing for them. So, what's the use of not forgiving? It's again a mental process. Just say, I forgive everyone in general. Don't even think about them, because that will upset you again. <laughs> in general, you have to forgive everyone. You will feel lighter just now. Just now, if you feel that way, you'll feel much lighter and you'll be very happy that it's over now, the headache is over. So, firstly you have to be very self-confident, secondly you are not to feel guilty and thirdly you have to forgive everyone without thinking of anyone whatsoever, in general. These are the three conditions. Also, those who want to have Self-realization should stay on, those who do not want can leave the hall, but don't leave at the time when we are awakening and you should not keep your eyes open and watch at everyone, because all the time we do that, looking at others, but this is the time we have to look at ourselves. So I would request you, those who don't want can leave the hall, it will be very civil on their part, but those who want it should know there will be no problem Nothing, it's your own, it's your own properties, this is your own power which will express itself, for which you don't have to pay. So this is absolutely as simple as that. <coughs> now, we have, first of all, to take out our shoes because 
See, these two stand between us and many things are there which stand. You need not take out your socks, you are all right. If you have questions, you should write them now. Tomorrow, when I will be coming, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, Friday. Uh, where, where, where is the program? We have Friday in the other hall, same building, uh, and I, then I will explain to you what is the spirit. Oh, but you must tell them properly because I don't want to confuse them. <clears throat> All Indians go away. <laughs> Indians have to leave. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like as I told you. So now we have taken out our shoes, you need not take out your socks. You have to just put your left and right foot apart from each other <clears throat> because the left side is the power of desire, the right side is the power of action. And these are two separate things. Now, we'll be using now our left hand like this, you can sit very comfortably. In Sahaja Yoga, comfort is very important. Sit very comfortably with your right hand, left hand towards Me, like this. And with the right hand, you will have to nourish, He'll show you, nourish your centers with your self-confidence, which I'll tell you later on. So please put your left hand like this. Now, it indicates or symbolizes that you want to have your Self-realization, the left hand. This symbolizes that you want to have your Self-realization. Now with the right hand, the action has to be taken, so you put your right hand on your heart. In the heart resides the Spirit. Now. If you are the Spirit, you become your own master, your own guru, your own guide, because in the light of the Spirit you know the Absolute. This center is created by great masters who were real masters within us, which has to be enlightened. So put this one, your hand, on the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side, and this is the center of your mastery. Now, you have to take your hand in the low portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and press it hard. This is the center of pure knowledge. Pure knowledge is the knowledge by which we know the Divine Laws, which we can operate, by which we can handle the power that is this all-pervading power. It starts flowing through you and we know how to utilize it. Then we take our right hand in the upper portion of our abdomen and press it there again on our <coughs> Master Principle, then on to your heart, where there is the Spirit within us. Now we put our right hand in the corner of our neck and our shoulder and put our head to our right. Now this is the center, as I told you, is spoiled if you feel guilty. I think it's quite strong here. So I would like to warn you, please don't feel guilty. Now, 
take your right hand now on your forehead across. I mean, you should be pleasantly placed towards yourself. You've done nothing wrong, you see. And put the he hands like this, the fingers this side, hand like this, and the your thumb on the other side. Now put down your head as far as possible. Here you have, this is the center where you have to forgive everyone in general. Now, then you have to take your right hand, the back side of your head, and push back your head as far as possible. Now this is the center where you have to ask forgiveness from this Divine Power without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, just for your own satisfaction. All right. Now, stretch your palm hand fully and put the center of your palm on the fontanel bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now push back your fingers. This is most important is to push back your fingers. So there's a good pressure on your fontanel bone. Now put down your head as far as possible and now move your skull slowly seven times. You will not have to do this again, only once for all. None of these things are to be done again. So please put your hand in such a manner that the scalp moves more than your hand seven times, slowly, clockwise. <clears throat> That's all. That's all we have to do. It's nothing much. Now we have to close our eyes. Before closing the eyes, I would say we should sit straight, not too much bending or too much slouching in front, but in a straight manner. <coughs> also, that if you have anything tight on your neck, or on your shoulder, you can take it a, a little bit, loosen it, and if you are wearing skept uh, skepticals, you can take them out for a while, because we are closing our eyes. You need not open them till I tell you. <coughs> now, please put your left hand towards me, both the feet on the ground, apart from each other. Now, close your eyes, comfortably on your lap comfortably on your lap. Now, put your right, right hand on your heart. If you are wearing a coat, you can push inside the coat, it's all right, on your heart. Now please close your eyes. <coughs> you can call me Mother or Sri Mataji, whatever you want to. You can now say in your heart, It's a question, it's a very important fundamental question. Ask this question three times in your heart. Mother, am I the spirit? Ask this question three times. Mother, am I the spirit? Ask this question three times. I have told you that if you are the Spirit, then you become your own master. <coughs> so now please take your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side and here you have to say, again ask a question very fundamental, Mother, am I my own master? Ask this question three times in your heart, Mother, am I my own master? I've already told you that I respect your freedom and I cannot force pure knowledge on you. You have to ask for it. So now please take your right hand in the low portion of your abdomen on the left hand side. You press it hard and 
here you have to say six times because this center has got six petals. Mother, please give me pure knowledge. When you ask for pure knowledge, this power of Kundalini starts rising and ascending. <coughs> so now we have to enrich our higher centers, nourish them with our self-confidence. So now please take your right hand in the upper portion of your abdomen, on the left hand side, And here you have to say, with full confidence ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Mother, I am my own guide. Any one of these you can say ten times, Mother, I am my own master. Say it with full confidence. One has to know <coughs> that we are not this body, this mind, this ego, these conditionings, but we are pure spirit. So now raise your right hand on your heart. Here again with full confidence you have to say, twelve times, Mother, I am the pure spirit. Mother, I am the pure spirit. Please say it twelve times. This divine power is the ocean of love, is the ocean of knowledge, ocean of compassion and blessings. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness and whatever mistakes you might commit, it can be easily dissolved in the power of this ocean of forgiveness. So please forgive yourself and raise your right hand in the corner of your neck and shoulder and turn your head to your right. Now here, with full confidence again, Please say sixteen times. Please say sixteen times. Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say sixteen times. Mother, I am not guilty at all. <coughs> I have already told you whether <coughs> you forgive or don't forgive. You do not do anything, but if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. <coughs> so now please raise your right hand onto your forehead across. <coughs> And here, hold your head with your thumb on one side and with your fingers on the other <coughs> and put down your head as far as possible. Here you have to say, from your heart, not how many times, with full confidence, Mother, I forgive everyone in general. <coughs> now, take your hand on the back side of your head. Push back your head as far as possible. 
here again without feeling guilty, without counting your mistakes, for your own satisfaction. You have to say again with, from your heart, not how many times. O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistake, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. You have to say from your heart, not how many times, O oh, Divine Power, if I have done any mistakes, knowingly or unknowingly, please forgive me. Now, last center, which is very important. Please stretch your hand and put the center of your palm on top of the fontanelle bone area, <coughs> which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now, push back your fingers as far as possible. And now put down your head here again I cannot force self realization on you. You have to ask for it. So now move your scalp slowly seven times clockwise saying seven times, please push back your fingers, otherwise there won't be any pressure, put down your head, please put down your head, do it carefully. Now, seven times you move your scalp slowly, saying seven times, Mother, please give me my Self-Realization. Now, please take down your hands, open your eyes. Please put your hands towards me now. Watch me without thinking, you can do it. Just higher, yes. Watch me without thinking. This is the first state where, where you are in thoughtless awareness. If you want to think, you will think, otherwise you will not think. A Sanskrit called as Nirvichar Samadhi. <coughs> now, put your right hand towards me like this, please. Bend your head <coughs> and see for yourself with your own left hand if there is a cool breeze or a warm breeze like waves coming out of your fontanel bone area. Now please remember, don't put your hand on top of your head, but away from it and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze is coming out of your head, maybe hot also. If you have not forgiven, it would be even hotter. Good. Now, Please put left hand towards me. And now bend your head again and see for yourself. Some people get very close and some people get it far away. Again once more, <coughs> with the right hand. <coughs> Now it's better. You can now put both your hands on top 
<coughs> towards the sky like this and push back your head and ask here one question three times. Mother, is this <coughs> the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost or Mother, is this the all-pervading power of God's love? Or Mother, is this the Parama Chaitanya? Ask any one of these questions three times. Now take down your hands, please. Now put your hands like this. Those who have felt cool or warm breeze coming out of their for fontanel bone or on their hands, fingertips, please raise both your hands. This is Brisbane or what? May God bless you all. All of you, what? All of you practical. May God bless you. What a great place it is. May God bless you. May God bless you. All have become saints now, so I bow to you. I hope tomorrow all of you will come and also ask your friends to come. This is the best thing you can give them. You feel very silent and peaceful within and joyous. Sometimes the joy bubbles out and people just start laughing also. It doesn't matter, it's good. There's nothing to be serious about. I would say that it is beyond your mind what you have achieved it. So I would like you, all of you, to come tomorrow again, bring your friends and then I'll meet all of you one by one. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, you should give them to Stephen and I'll try to answer them tomorrow and also tell you about the Spirit, what has happened to you. All your eyes are sparkling if you want to see Friday, each other. Friday, not uh, I'm sorry, Friday, I'm making mistakes like this, but I don't feel guilty. <laughs> So hope to see you all on Friday. May God bless you.